Hey everybody, it's Dr. McVeary here and welcome to another video in our Objectives and Assessment series. In the last video, we looked at using um, cognitive taxonomies to find the verbs for our learning objectives. And in this video, I want to switch to comparing test objectives and learning objectives and really see some of those differences. Now, test objectives, they have to be measurable and accessible, um, but they're independent of a learning activity. They don't, you know, you don't want them to be connected to having prior knowledge from, from a specific learning activity. You want that test objective to work no matter which learning activity people were engaged in. They also um, usually contain clusters of, of knowledge and skills. It's not just, you know, and you'll see things like understand and know. However, when we go and look at learning objectives, they too have to be measurable and accessible. Um, but they are totally dependent on the learning activity. So, for example, you know, I would say read a chapter and summarize a, the um, main idea versus uh, a test objective might be able to say understand um, the importance of main ideas. Uh, so, and then with learning objectives also, you know, they have to elicit evidence of knowledge growth towards, towards that that, that bigger test objective. So along the way, a learning objective should elicit knowledge. Remember, you never know, truly know what somebody knows. You're, you're kind of looking at the residue, the evidence of what they learned around the way. So you want to make sure, using the criteria of your learning objective, that you the, your learners drop a little bit of um, evidence along the way that you can then utilize to evaluate their evidence of growth. And let's take an example from the Foundations of Reading test. So here's the reading comprehension objective um, for like the section from the foundations of reading test and understand how to apply reading comprehension skills and strategies to imaginative and literary texts. There's a lot in that. Think about everything that you would need to do. You could really break up this cluster of knowledge. And in fact, they even do and break it down into kind of sub test objectives. And one of those would be Use of comprehension strategies to support effective reading, giving you examples like rereading, visualizing, reviewing, self-monitoring, and other metacognitive strategies. Those are still test objectives. Um, and you can measure, they're measurable, you know, can you measure how they use those comprehension strategies, the, your ability to know how to apply that? Because that's, remember, that's what it's, can you apply those comprehension strategies to literary texts? So an example might be, um, you know, is for a learning objective versus one of those objectives as I search for a pen. Think about what if we did, you know, given a reading summary. Evaluate a student's skill to find a main idea. You know, there is a very specific learning objective. And often they're not, but when you think about it, you know, here's the condition. Um, our criteria, you know, what... What's a skill I'm trying to, what's, what do I have to, what's, what skill am I trying to measure? The ability to evaluate a student. And what knowledge would then be measured, uh, would I be looking for? How well, you know, that to find main ideas. So we have, so in that learning objective, we have all of those um, bits and pieces. Now you could have just said, evaluate a student's skill to find a main idea. Um, but oftentimes, when you give that criteria, it connects it back to the dependence of the learning activity. 